and welcome to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. I'm Mark Willoughby filling in for Alan Waddell. It was a little bit under the weather this week, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, this past week, two and two, coach. Uh, uh, you guys played solid basketball. Talk about the week and how your team progressed. Well, I, I really uh, am very proud of the way that the team is progressing, and now we've kind of gone from uh, we, we've competed against some of the best teams in the country. Now we're beginning to beat some teams, so we're learning. We're in that process of learning how to win. Um, certainly, like the feeling of uh, of winning games better than better than than, than maybe playing people close. And uh, so, real excited about the possibility and have some real highlights over the last couple of weeks. And in that mix, Houston Baptist, you get your first conference win here at Southeastern. You guys start off really strong, and that when you close strong, just a great ball game. At one of our better performances. Uh, we have been. We've uh, really liked playing at home. We haven't had an opportunity to do that too much, but we love the atmosphere here in the University Center. The players enjoy being at home. It's a whole different routine than being on the road. And I was glad to see us play so well. And I, offensively, I felt like that was one of our better performances of the year. And we'll certainly take a look at the highlights uh, here momentarily. And then you go into Sam Houston, uh, just a tough basketball team to get them here at home, but uh, just a tough ball game, very physical. Well, Sam Houston, you know, uh, preseason, uh, uh, some people have pred predicted that they win the league, uh, certainly uh, no, no lower than second in the different polls. Um, uh, very hard fought game, you know, we're up five with a minute left in the first half and they end up closing the half on a 5-0 run tied up. Uh, but, you know, we go toe to toe and, you know, got, a, got you know, stretched into double figures there the last couple minutes of the game. But I felt like that, again, our, our players uh, gave a great account of themselves. And one thing that they're doing is they're battling hard and competing. And as and what we're telling them, you continue to do that, good things happen, and they're beginning to see that happen. And perhaps uh, the biggest gut check uh, game of the year, incarnate word, on the road, very tough uh, environment to play, double overtime against a very good basketball team, and your team stood strong in that one. Incarnate uh, is leading the league in scoring. They have the top, the NCAA's top scorer in Denzel Livingston, a tall order. Uh, uh, Zay Jackson, who's our do-it-all guard, you know, is who we put on him. Uh, he ended up with 25, but it took him 10 extra minutes to do it, and he had to shoot 22 balls to get to his get to his average. So I thought Zay did an outstanding job. He was eight of 22 from the field. What a great game! Tough environment there. Very small gym, a gymnasium for the folks that maybe not, had never been there. A team that's transitioned into our league. Um, and, and again, they've had some great wins. They've already beaten, they've won at Nebraska, they've won at Princeton. They've got some really high quality Division I wins. And for us to go in there and beat them uh, was, a, was, was a very significant W for us. You know, and talk about you know, the constant uh, on this basketball team with your, with your club, your, your backcourt play, your guards. They've been incredible all year. They really have. Uh, certainly the backbone of our team. Um, uh, Zay Jackson and, and Josh Fillmore, and again, they're drawing a, a lot of attention. They saw some triangle and two last night uh, from Lamar. Uh, but those, those guys, and, and the, what I'm excited about, one, they're just learning our system of play, but both those guys will be back next year. And, and you talk about, you know, they're playing 35, 40 minutes a game just about. They're not coming off the floor. And you, you turn around quickly from Saturday to a Monday night game. That's always tough, uh, especially with the league uh, schedule this year. Talk about, you know, uh, a little bit tougher uh, against Lamar, very physical basketball game. Talk about that game. Really. Well, you know, we're certainly disappointed that we didn't win. Uh, felt like that our players played well enough. We held them to under 34% shooting from the field. Generally translates into, translates into a victory. Uh, However, you know, some things we, we, we were uh, not going to get into any, any other particulars uh, other than uh, we didn't shoot the basketball well enough and, and, and we, we had a poor performance from the line. Had we shot the basketball better from the line, I don't even think it would have been that close going in the last couple of minutes. Give Lamar credit, uh, kind of a blue collar type team. They're very physical, uh, got after us really hard on the defensive end as well, uh, and the better team won last night. But certainly would like the opportunity to maybe play them again. And when we come back, we'll take a look at Houston Baptist right after this on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelos offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern 
and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibahoe and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. And welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Let's toss it out to the UC and Lance Pittman, voice of the Lions, as the Lions took on Houston Baptist. Again, not a bad crowd on hand here tonight at the uh, University Center. Just good to be home. Lions are going to do something in the next 48 hours they haven't had a chance to do all year, and that's play two back to back. Jay up top. Houston Baptist opens up a uh, little man-to-man, -man, and Ochi powers it up and in, left-handed off the glass, 2-0. Lions just like that. Nice move by Ochi to Odunsey. Odunsey holds it on, back in the right corner. They'll work it down low to Vilde. Vilde powers in against Upson. Left-handed jumper on the way. He just bumped it. Upson out of the way, 2-2. Rebound to Fillmore. Fillmore on the move, left to right, top of the key, out on the wing, Jackson. Zay for three, that one, yes! Zay knocks the three down, it's 7-2 Lions, and that quick start, Jay Lander won it. Lions have gotten off to 88-3 of the year. Fillmore sets up, he'll shoot a three, that one's on the way, that one good. Fillmore knocked down a three. His 36th tray of the year, second tray of the first half. 10 away by Jackson on the floor. Up the floor to Ochi. Ochi one dribble, two dribble, slam! Dunk two-handed. Tomahawk slam on the other end. 12-6 Lions. Ochi's got his fourth point here. Jude driving on the left side in the corner. Jackson Zay sits up for three. Yes, bingo from the far corner. Second tray for Jackson. Lions up by nine, 15-6. He's going to put it on the floor a couple times. Going to spin a little reverse, laying it up, and that one in. Nice move by Devante. And the Lions are up 11, 17-6. By Chuck Waku, 17-8 Lions. Guillory's trying to beat everybody down the floor. He'll lay it up and count it, and one. Great ball awareness by the Lions and great hustle by Guillory. They get it across. Boy, the Lions really making the work. I buy in the middle, they beat the press, laid it up and in. You know you're going to give up some easy buckets. You're just trying to get them out of whack. Barkley driving, laid it up and in. Feg left, went right. Brett with a nice move down the middle of the lane. Guillory. Kicks it off to Jenkins. Jenkins will stop, middle of the paint. Left-handed layup on the way, good. Jenkins, little reverse layup there, switched hands and laid it up and in, 23 to 12. Fillmore, free throw line, gonna take it all the way, laid it up and in, nice move by Fillmore. That paint, that middle of the lane has opened up several times for the Lions, they're making them pay for it, 27-16. Fillmore will pick it up, hand it off to Guillory. Guillory's gonna drive, kick it across the way. Jenkins sets up for three, yes! Cedric with a three from the far corner. Timeout, Houston Baptist with 9.49. They were waiting for the media, but they work baseline. He'll bounce it out near side. Three ball on the way from Stickler. That one good. Jordan Stickler, six foot junior out of Annapolis, Maryland, has pulled the Huskies back to within nine. That is the first three ball for the Huskies here in the ball game, 30 to 21. This is has it up top. Duplessis bounces it down low to Upson. Devante will spin. Power it up, that one good. Hit the back of the rim, just fell in. A right, nice move by Devante. Devante's got six points tonight. And the Lion lead is 11-32-21, uh, under seven minutes to go. It's in left to right into the front court, 6-10 to go first half. Guillory down low here to Ochi. Ochi's gonna pull up, 10-foot jumper, good. Here's Jackson gonna drive, give and go, Upson. Upson will lay it up and in. And Devante, another bucket. The big boys are scoring tonight, 36-24, Upson and Ochi. The right wing up top, Fillmore. Fillmore is uh, being guarded by Smith. They'll go back door. Ochi on the alley-oop, laid it up and in. Nice pass, nice move by Ochi, 
Four. Ups and off to Dent's shot. Bounce pass to Jackson. Jackson, a little late and up and in. Nice move. He had to change hands. Kind of turn his body a little bit. Got the bucket. 16 point Lion lead. There's Jackson, another steal. Oh, Gilroy couldn't hang on to it as it went out of bounds. Minutes and 50 seconds. Smith's going to try in the middle of the paint. Teardrop shot from eight feet. In and out, no good. But the rebound and the stick back good by Houston Baptist. Husky, Smith, free throw line. Give and go, Abara. Abara's going to lay it up. And the Huskies have scored. After the block shot, 41 29. The lead is 12 as we go under two minutes. The one. Odunsi, a couple of point blank shots, couldn't get it to go. Under 10 to go. Phil Moore left to right into the front court. Top of the key. He's going to stop. Pull the trigger from three. Yeah, baby, went in from about three feet beyond the top of the key. 20 minutes of basketball in the history books. And the Lions have a 16 point lead. Phil Moore from downtown. His second three. 45-29. Coach, 45-29, you guys have a commanding lead. What's your message to the team in the locker room at halftime with a big lead like that? You know, you know, there's uh, halftime's different, and you have to almost just play it, play it on, on a feel. Um, we were playing well. I was looking for reasons to be upset, you know, and find reasons to, to uh, or things that we wanted to do. And what we really did at halftime was what did we expect them maybe to do differently in the second half? Would they come with full court pressure, extend their defense? So what we did is really more of a, instead of correcting much from the first half, kind of predicting what we felt like they would do and have ourselves prepared. Now let's take a look at the second half highlights. They go to Jackson, down low to Ochi. Ochi taking a strong reverse layup. He scored the first bucket in the first half, scores the first lion bucket here in the second half. 11 points for Ochi. Pass stolen by Guillory. Guillory uh, near side, Fillmore. Fillmore stops, gives it to Ochi. Ochi lays it up and in, running the floor. Ochi, a couple of points here, a couple of buckets here in the second half. Have the basketball. Ochi takes inbounds, pass from Guillory. Ochi turn around, jumper on the way. Good. Ochi's on fire here in the second half. He's three out of three, 51 31. The lead is 20. Up goes right, pull up, 16 footer on the way. Good. 51 33. Ochi had it knocked away out of his hands. Oh, Duncy to Smith. Smith shot blocked from behind by Fillmore. Joshua just got position. And Smith goes 5 6. Fillmore, a little taller than him, not many guards. He towers over. Jackson free throw line going to try to take it. And a shot off the glass, good. Downtown, lay up on the way, tipped up by Amara. And that one's up and in. Upsy baseline, double team. Bounces it, Jackson got a hand on it, got the steal, saves it to Upson. Back to Jackson. Zay looking to run, right to left into the front court. Down the floor to Guillory. Andrew taking it all the way. He'll lay it up and in, and the foul. Just heads up, heads up Jackson, and Guillory he knows if he can get down the floor, he's got a good chance of getting his hands on the basketball. Guillory angles right. Gets a screen by Epson. Going to bring it around. Middle of the paint. Going to take it all the way. Lay it up and in. Left-handed layup by Guillory. A lot like the first half. The middle of that paint is wide open. Looking for a little help. Crossover dribble. Down low to Ochi. Ochi's going to take it power. He'll turn. Reverse. Lay it up and in. Ochi. Another bucket. Got fouled and looked at Jay Ladner, shrugged his shoulders. He's got 17. Eight hit a little bit. Guillory, left wing. Couple of dribbles, bounces it to Jenkins. Shot clock at 12. Near side, Fillmore. Three ball on the way. That one good. Fillmore knocked it down from the wing. Three out of six from downtown. Their seventh three ball of the night. Greaves to Jackson, near side, Guillory. Guillory, double team, bounces it to Jackson. Zay, back to Greaves, right side, Greaves. Near side, Fillmore. Joshua for three. Yes. Another three for Fillmore, 72-54. 18-point Lion lead. Jackson back to Guillory. Guillory, a couple of dribbles. Jackson near side. Zay down low to Upson. Upson alley-oop, laid it up and in. Assist for Jackson. His fifth of the night. Bucket for Upson, 74-56. Come on out of the zone. Graves, three from the far corner. Yes, Graves with a three ball. 77 58, 435 to go. Tried to work it in into Upson. Upson will lay it up, score, and get the foul. Devontae may have got away with a little travel there. Foul on Abara with a three point opportunity right here. Free throw up on the way. That one good. Trying to drive, can't do it in the middle to Obaro. Obaro will lay it up, miss the easy one. Well, out of there comes Jackson. Zay, middle of the paint, bounce pass, Guillory. Guillory lays it up and in. That's how you run a fast break. 
82-61, biggest lead of the night. Stetler has it, and Greaves to steal. Foot race now, and Greaves gonna take it. He'll lay it up and score. Greaves gets the steal in the bucket on the other end. He's got six points tonight. Jackson's gonna drive in the corner of Fillmore. Joshua for three, bingo! Joshua, 10-3 ball of the night for the Lions. His fifth, he's five out of eight from downtown. That did it right there. 87, 67, minute five to go. Lions by 20. Patterson with the three answer. Can't get it. Air ball to Jackson. Jackson's going to walk it down. Coach, uh, you come out in the second half. You, you stay strong, 42 to 38. You win the second half as well. You get a 20-point win. Uh, just your total thoughts on this basketball game. Well, again, I, I felt like offensively is one of our better performances of the season. Uh, they had already had some quality wins. They were just coming off a defeat of McNeese at McNeese, who had just beaten Mississippi State. Um, and, and they're going to be a team to contend with uh, as we progress throughout the league season. But I was really proud of our effort and a great opportunity for us to play all of our players as well. Got some guys uh, that work really hard every day uh, that got an opportunity to get in the game, get them some significant minutes. And when we come back, we'll talk about Incarnate Word and Lamar right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelos offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Well, now we're going to take a look at the Incarnate Word highlights as we head to San Antonio, Texas, right here on the Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Coach, uh, you guys uh, down at the break by four, you come out in the second half. It's a nip and tuck, toe to toe basketball game. They had a six point lead down the stretch. You guys were able to tie the basketball game up late, send it to overtime. What's going through your mind uh, trying to get that first conference win? Uh, you had some tough road losses before that, but just to keep your team physically and mentally in this basketball game. Well, Incarnate's the, uh, by far, uh, the leading uh, offensive team in our league in, in terms of their. Uh, an offensive uh, machine, basically. And uh, they have the NCAA's leading score in Denzel Livingston. So, uh, you know, we knew we had a tall order uh, there in terms of going to their place and, 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 and playing them. But uh, again, I felt like our guys got, got ready to play their competitive bunch. And 
uh, went, went in there and again the game's back and forth, although we did get down a few points there late. Uh, Josh Fillmore hit a huge shot to get it into overtime and we score at the end of, end of the first overtime, which again has to go to the monitor. Um, still don't know the officials, I don't think were very clear whether that was good or not, but anyway they ruled it no good. So we go into the second overtime and, and then we spurt out there and, I mean, quickly put that one away. Well, talk about the emotion of that. Here you go, you, you, you tie the ball game up late. You actually have a chance to even win the game late. Maybe might have got fouled, who knows, at the end of regulation. Then you get into overtime, you have a basket taken away by the uh, replay. What, how's that psyche of your basketball team? You, you, you have two chances to win the basketball game. Now you got to go into a third or second overtime. That, it was very difficult to be honest with you because obviously the the, the celebration when the, when when Zay made the basket and, and you know it, it's a tough thing. But I, I knew when it went to monitor, I was very concerned with the way the officials were approaching that uh, that it may not go our way. Uh, even though we certainly felt like it was good, I know. Uh, you know, our radio man felt, Lance Pittman felt like it was clearly good. And, uh, but anyway, it, it, that's why they have the monitors and I have to respect the official's decision. But it, that's exactly what I was doing over on the bench was, fellas, we're not sure this is going to happen. Let's go ahead and prepare for this next overtime period. Uh, so we didn't just have this big letdown to begin the period. And I said, obviously, if it's going to be good, then we can celebrate at that time. So let's let's hold tight. Well, uh, as it, as our, our luck would have it or, or as the play uh, was reviewed, you know, it, it did not go in our favor. But anyway, with all that being said, I was proud of the way we, we, we certainly played well enough in the second overtime to remove any doubt. Kind of credit to your staff and your kids for uh, maintaining your poise and and getting into that uh, second overtime and sprinting the victory, a 10-point win over Incarnate Word. Well, we were at, at that point of the game, and as they were as well, both teams were in just severe foul trouble. And, um, uh, you know, I know Zay Jackson had played the last five minutes of regulation and then both overtimes period without committing that fifth foul, and they were beginning to really attack him. We decided to, which we don't play a lot of zone defense, but in an effort to protect some of our players uh, from the fifth foul, we, we went to a zone defense, which is, ha hasn't been characteristic of us. Happened to be the right call that night. I have to credit our staff for that. They made that suggestion on the bench and ended up being the right call at the right time. And the first uh, road victory uh, in your tenure here at Southeastern <laughs> in conference play, at one of many more more to come and uh, just a great uh, win uh, against Incarnate Word. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Lamar highlights right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelos offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Aaron, you're all set. Great, thanks. Mike, thanks for doing that discount double check. You saved us hundreds. What was that? The discount double check? It's when we comb through your policies to make sure that you're getting all the discounts you deserve. No, I get that part, but you guys are doing my move. The discount double check move? That's my touchdown dance. You're a dancer? I'm a quarterback. Oh, quarterback. More. I'm a robot. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Aaron Rodgers got his. How about you? And welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Let's head out to Beaumont, Texas, as the Lions took on the Lamar Cardinals, courtesy of the Lamar Television Network. On Saturday, he gets double teamed. High post to Gregory. Pass to Marcus Owens. He wants the ball. He shoots the ball, and he knocks on a three-pointer. Lion eludes it with a dribble. Drives. Jump pass outside to Guillory. He's double teamed to the baseline to Jackson, who shoots a three, and it's good. Zay Jackson averaging six, and it's Dale Bodier feeding Holiday for a breakaway slam dunk. Plissis, now over to Fillmore, one more pass over to Jackson, and he hits a three-pointer, so Zay Jackson. Inbounds, it comes to Grievous in the corner, Jackson open for three, and he made another one. Three threes tonight for Zay Jackson. High post screen, splits the defense, drives in the lane, jump stop, hanging layup, scores for Anthony Holiday. Dontavius wants it down low, pass thrown away, intercepted by Greaves. Greaves all the way for a layup, and it's good. The lead for Southeastern Louisiana. Dribble looking for help. 
Tyran has it around his man, driving lane, takes it all the way in, running back two for Tyran de la Baudière. That's a run by Lamar Jackson around his man, drives all the way inside, scoop to the hoop for two for Zay Jackson. He's averaging 16, almost play catch of the three-point line. And here's another alley-oop this time. A layup is good by Dontavia Sears. Breaking up the zone, 28-27. Trying to drive on his man. Spin move on Holiday. Gets him in the air. Puts up a 10-footer. And Zay Jackson scores again. He now has 19 points. Hands on the outside wave to Zay Jackson. Jackson down the lane. Jump pass outside. Comes to Fillmore. A deep three. And it's good. Coach, uh, again, we talked about it earlier, uh, just a tough loss at Lamar, uh, you know, physical basketball game, kind of a grinded out uh, type of game that, uh, you know, low scoring, typical coming back after a short rest, but uh, just your final thoughts on Lamar. Well, you know, I uh, was concerned about a letdown uh, coming off the double overtime emotional win at, in uh, Incarnate, but, you know, over to Lamar, we knew they had a good team. Coach Tick Price is a very familiar face in college basketball circles and in the Southland, and being at UNO and in McNeese as the head coach, and he's made a great impact on their program. But um, we just didn't shoot it well enough, and I'm going to leave it at that, uh, shoot it from the field or free throw line. Uh, but certainly a game we felt like that we could win. And obviously you guys uh, you, you know, play well enough in spurts to win. And uh, lesson learned, you guys will come back home. And you get a, a week off after a quick turnaround. Now you have a full week off. Uh, you play next Monday against uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi right here. First chance with the students back. And it uh, should be a great atmosphere here in the U.S. I hope so. Uh, I have been very pleased with our atmosphere we've had here all year. I think, I think we have things in place uh, for us really to have a great home. Uh, environment and our players enjoy it. It's, it. There's a great spirit here. We just need to have more people here and uh, for our students to have the first time all season that, that we're going to be playing a home game during the time that they're actually attending school. Uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, if you haven't seen Southeastern play yet, a very fun team to watch. Uh, get up and down the floor, very well coached and uh, well worth the price of admission. Come on out and check out Jay Ladner and his, his crew and uh, Coach, look forward to seeing you guys next Monday. Thank, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind comments. And on behalf of our, our program and staff, we appreciate the job y'all are doing as well. And thanks to everybody at Lion Nation for the great support that we're receiving. I know uh, you want to wish Alan uh, best of luck as he heals and gets better. Alan and... didn't get that from me. I happened to have that a couple weeks ago, so I hope Alan didn't get the flu from me. Alan, get better. We look forward to having you back. But thanks, Mark, for the job you do too. And he'll be back in the chair next week as uh, Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner comes back at you next week. We'll see you next week, everybody.